Lakeland Public Television's Common Ground is brought to you by the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund. Welcome everybody to the Somme Consolidated School in Somme, Minnesota, downtown Somme. My name is Eva Stengo. I'm a, a longtime resident, was born here in Somme. Well, I'm one of the people in the Somme Community Club that uh, we have decided we're going to try to keep it going and keep it up. Well, I went to school here for eight years, of course. All of my family did. Our grandfather was one of the people that got started on having a consolidated school here. Along with my grandfather in 1910 or so, there were several other of the uh, leaders that were instrumental in getting it going, and one was uh, G.L. Matson, who lived just uh, very close by, Jens Walden, and John Carlson, who was from, an, from, the other, from another school, and John Rust. And they, along with my grandfather, were, really worked hard to get to the state, they had to go down to the state and do all kinds of things, and that, which wasn't easy in those days. And uh, then they exchanged all kinds of letters and so on with the educational people down south. And so uh, finally got it going. And uh, it was a, a very happy day for the whole community when they opened up. And I, I don't have that exact date, but it was September of 1912. The consolidation was taking the, the pupils from the three small schools and having them come to this one location for their schooling. 83 people that came the first year. And then uh, as they got more people, they decided to have, they had eight grades at first, or maybe less than that at first. And then they uh, had high school for seven years also. Right now we're having some fundraisers to try to raise money to paint the building. We plan to have a celebration of the 100th year of Psalm School in August of 2012, and we're trying to contact as many people as we can that we know have gone here. Our families have been involved here in other ways too. Well, my name is Alan Krugsing. I grew up out here. I went my first eight years to school here from 19... 38 to 1946, I guess. I grew up just half a mile from here, so I walked to school. Every day, it didn't matter. I think I've made it when, it, if it wasn't 40 below, it was close to 40 below a time or two. And it was probably different than any school in town. For one thing, we used to one of our things we did was we'd go tracking in the wintertime and we'd send a bunch of, one group out in the woods ahead of us and we'd give them, I don't remember how long, but we'd give them some time and then we'd, they'd try to cover their tracks and we'd try to track them down. And sometimes that would last way past noon hour. Be probably one o'clock or later in the, and I guess our teachers must have thought that was good for us. We never, they never really said anything about when we had to be back. We got back when we could. So that, and we used to, it's about an eighth of a mile up to the river. Winter time we used to go up there skating at noon hour. And in the summertime, we'd go up there swimming at noon hour. And that was all unsupervised. The teachers were, they stayed back here. And I know there would never be such a thing like that happen nowadays. So I guess that was different. We, we took care of ourselves more, I guess is what I'm trying to say. We never even thought about somebody coming along to supervise us. We never never crossed their mind, I guess. This classroom that we're sitting in now was, was the first, second, third, and fourth grade rooms. And the one on the, on the next door was fourth, fifth, fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth until about 1957 uh, or so when they took some of the classes and went to, to Callier. And then it ended up with first, second, and third here in 1960 when it was closed. 
These are some of the school books that are in this school. Besides the building, there's been many other items preserved here. Even right over there, the blackboard brush cleaner. There, and that was some kid's job after school to sit there and clean the brushes. And it's, it's suction, it's a natural draft to suck it up, and that goes out the vent up the roof. And I've never seen another one like it any place. I mean, I go to these old shows a lot, and they, a lot of places got replicas of old schools. I've never seen anything like that in any of them. It's important to preserve a building like this one. It's like stepping back in time to walk in here. I guess the first thing is underneath, there's a shelf under here. That's where you keep your books. And you are supposed to keep them neat. The teacher used to come around and make sure. And there's this trough here, your pencils go. And this is for an inkwell. And they used to have glass, ones I remember, glass with a kind of a tin top on a, a spring like that you could, where you filled your pen. Or I guess you dipped your pen if you just had a dip, plain pen. 1960 was the last, last class. Miss Leona Nyberg was the last teacher here. Well, we do have lots of books, and um, in the building there are things that were uh, some uh, students' work and so on that uh, we try to preserve some of it. Not very easy to preserve. Over the years, we've had several different groups that have helped to maintain it. And at one time, the WPA people came in and they did some renovating and fixing up. And uh, that was very worthwhile. And then, uh, oh, I don't know, 15 or 20 years ago, I suppose it was, we had uh, green thumb men that were here for quite a long time. They did a lot of painting and fixing up. And, uh, redid the floors and all kinds of things that needed to be done. And then since then, we've <laughs> we struggle with maintaining it, I guess. I'd like, I guess I'd like to see the top floor fixed up. I don't know if we have it yet or not, but we're getting, uh, remember how many gallons of paint from Valspar. And so uh, I, and then all we have to do is get somebody to put it on, which isn't the easiest thing big building. Well, I like the people in the, in the whole area, I guess, to realize that we have this special place here, and uh, it's a place we'd like to have people come and see, and uh, know that it's a place where we have activities going on, and like to have them come and visit. If somebody wants to come, I guess the best thing would be to stop at the Stom store, which is right close by, and ask them if they can either help them get in, sometimes they can do that too, or uh, contact somebody who would help and come and open it up. If you enjoyed this segment of Lakeland Public Television's Common Ground, consider making a contribution at lptv.org. If you have segment ideas pertaining to North Central Minnesota, contact us at legacy at lptv.org. Ground is funded by the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund by the vote of the people on November 4, 2008.